Good morning, friends. Today, I would like to discuss this very, very interesting paper published in Science, uh, February 10th, uh, 2022. The title is Color Restriction in Humans Reveals Immunometabolic Regulators of Health Span. So this is a paper by, by my dear friend, uh, Deep Dixit. Deep is, a, as you can see here, is a fantastic scientist. He is the director of the Yale Center for Research on Aging. Uh, Yale School of Medicine is really a brilliant scientist, a very good friend, and this paper is outstanding as always. Thank you, Deep. Okay, so in this paper, uh, Deep and colleagues studied um, the effects of color restriction in uh, a subset of the participants at the multi-center calorie study. I was a co-investigator in this study. This is, uh, I think, you know, uh, data collected in the subset uh, of um, participants in the Pennington uh, Center. Uh, so uh, in this study, uh, we prescribe 25% color restriction. In reality, we uh, obtain a 14% color restriction. And uh, the results, you know, we publish a lot of papers on the cardiometabolic, inflammatory, oxidative stress, and many other benefits. So this is a new paper on the effects of color restriction, 14% 14, 14 color restriction in two years. And in this subset, as I said, uh, Ravosin and colleagues and uh, Deep, they measured uh, the, the uh, thymus volume by MRI, by magnetic resonance imaging. And they found that this modest 14% color restriction over two years increased timic mass and volume significantly. They also have shown that there was a significant increase in the signal joint T cell receptor excision circles. That is a biomarker of basically uh, recent uh, timic emigrant cells uh, uh, in CD4 and CD8 T lymphocytes. So basically there is an increase in, uh, uh, in, in, in thymus function. That's very, very important. Uh, uh, then uh, they did transcriptomics in, in the CD4, didn't see any change. And these data therefore are suggesting that this tissue protective immunometabolic program uh, of enhanced timing function uh, is uh, independent of transcriptome changes. The next step, you know, because they collected uh, adipose tissue biopsies of a subset of these participants of calorie phase two, they measured transcriptome in the adipose tissue. And they found that these two years of 14% calorie restriction was uh, responsible for uh, an upregulation of 233 genes and a downregulation of 131 genes. Uh, interestingly, some of these genes that have been changed by color restriction in humans are not changed in animals, in rodents. So there are different transcripts. And in particular, there was one, the PLA2GT, that uh, I'm going to tell you in, in a second that it looks to be very, very important. But then there were other genes that were changed by color restriction in humans like SPARC, CA3, PLIN5, and uh, PDA3A, DPT, NAMT, uh, and PPR alpha. Now, uh, in, when they did the analysis of this gene uh, transcriptome, of this, uh, uh, they found that basically the CR in humans, in the adipose tissue at least, was increasing mitochondrial biogenesis and PPR alpha. Uh, driven fatty acid uh, oxidation, 
there was an upregulation of uh, proton couple transport of uh, monocarboxylates uh, such as lactate, pyruvate, and ketone bodies. There was an induced in, induce induction of the BALM1 clock pathway, a very important gene for prolongevity gene. And there was a downregulation of, of transcripts uh, uh, of uh, innate immune activation uh, and NFKB and other inflammatory genes. Again, the most interesting part of this paper is that uh, when uh, Deep went to analyze in particular these, uh, these gene, these, 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 these um, uh, PLA2G7, uh, basically is a phospholipase belonging to the group 7A platelet activating factor acetyl hydrolases, that is my, my macrophages, they found that you know, these, these genes, this PLA2G7 was reduced in the adipose tissue of humans uh, on color restriction in calorie phase two. And when DEEP created a knockout mice for this gene, they, he found basically that these animals, they were more resistant to obesity when fed a high fat diet. They were partially protected from hepatic steatosis, again, response to a high fat diet. They had increased energy expenditure and uh, the, the macrophages of, in the adipose tissue of these animals had less secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines like interleukin-6 and interleukin-12. In the serum, they found a lower concentration of interleukin-1-beta after exposure to LPS. And in 24 months old PLG27 knockout mice, there was a decreased plasma concentration of TNF-alpha interleukin-1-beta. Finally, they also found that these uh, uh, all 24 month old PLG7 deficient mice uh, that is similar to a 70 years old human had larger thymus and higher thymocyte abundance. Therefore, they were protected uh, uh, against uh, from age related thymic involution. So, again, very, very interesting data suggesting that. A moderate, again, is not like 40% CR. If a moderate 14% CR already at one year and, and two years has an effect in lower inflammation, in uh, uh, improving immune function by uh, uh, changing this, P, uh, this, this molecule, this PLA to G7, therefore sparing the thymus from the typical involution, age-dependent involution, and therefore basically better immune function, less inflammation and better metabolism. Very interesting paper. Thank you, Deep and uh, Eric Ravisin for, for, for this uh, important contribution to science and for a new piece of the puzzle, a new block that is adding information to explain how Modern CR, not only in animals, but in humans, has important uh, prolongevity effects in regulating inflammation, immune function, and metabolism. Thank you.